is Palma Accardi and you are watching Tidal Flooding Talk. We are brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition and filmed live every Sunday night here at the Irish Pub in Atlantic City. And welcome to the last Sunday of summer, though feeling like fall. I refuse to let summer go. I got the shorts on. It was freezing this morning, walking around with uh, flip flops and frost. But uh, I'm meteorologist Dan Skeldon. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, after after a tough Sunday for the Eagles. Another tough, tough Sunday. Eagles, <laughs> another tough Sunday. My Patriots play tonight, so as long as we're wrapped up by 8:20, I'm good. Uh, we we like to welcome guests each and every week. We're at the Irish Pub. We're on the second floor, the, the quiet, socially distanced hotel lobby, and we're, we're really excited to welcome not one but two first-time guests to Title Flooding Talk uh, this Sunday. Bob and Cindy Furch from Shore Local. Guys, normally we'd shake your hand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank, Thank you. Our elbow. Thank you. Okay, elbow. <laughs> What's up? Sure. And uh, you know, welcome to Tidal Flooding Talk. And you know, before, it's great to be here. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about you know your role in the community, your experience, uh, you know, at the shore the last thirty years, uh, in and out of storms, keeping the public informed. You're free to ask questions of Bob and Cindy as well. Feel free to just listen in on Facebook or or join the conversation and post any questions or comments you have, weatherwise or otherwise. And. Uh, I'm feeling the opposite as you, Dan. I took any chance to take my sweaters out and get my fall wardrobe ready to go. Um, the fall weather is exciting, but I guess it's not really here to stay yet. This is a tease. All right, <laughs> fall officially begins Tuesday morning, 9.30, 1 a.m. Which and is my birthday. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. On the first day of fall. Nice. Second, oh. yes. Nice, because fall is normally the 21st. So this year, your birthday falls on the first day of it fall. Is. And uh, we do have summer weather coming back. It's back up here 80 Wednesday and Thursday. Hurricane season is still active. We have tidal flooding along the shore, not because of a storm. Hurricane Teddy's out east of Bermuda, but just with the onshore wind and the new moon, we had tidal flooding. That's going to go away as the wind shifts and the... Uh, and the tides diminish. But, um, so we do have some weather to talk about as well. And again, feel free to join the conversation. My only um, admittance of the cooler weather is I'm drinking coffee instead of a cold, instead, instead of a cold beverage. That's, that's about it. That's the only uh, nod I'll give to the cool weather this weekend. Well, before we get to the show, the New Jersey Coastal Coalition would like to remind our viewers that floodwaters do more than get things wet. They can cause electrical fires, spread contaminants, and wash away buildings. Your best defense is to evacuate. So when your community says it's time to go, go. All right, good advice. And again, Bob and Cindy Furch, well, first, simple question. Just tell us a little bit about yourselves and, okay. uh, and, and, and what you're doing now and what brought you here. Sure, sure. Well, my parents uh, had a summer house in Ocean City. They were in it out most of the time, but on the off season, the kids were invited back. And uh, we, uh, my brother and I took up uh, surfing like as, as young kids. And we just love surfing Ocean City, uh, uh, Sea Isle. And um, after college, my brother and I moved down the shore. My, my parents full time after that actually. Uh, and surfing is kind of what kept me interested in, in moving down here. And the shore life, kind of the laid back style. Uh, it's something that I loved and I, and, I, and I felt it would be perfect to grow a family uh, in this type of environment. And at the same time in college, I met my wife Cindy and we went to uh, Bloomsburg in Pennsylvania, originally from Bucks County, I'm from Bucks, Cindy's from Montgomery County. And uh, we've been living down here now for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. And, and surfers, you guys have to know about the weather. As a matter of fact, you know, as a meteorologist in South Jersey, since like, you know, uh, when I first came down here, surfers taught me a lot about, you know, wave forecasting and wind forecasting and, uh, you know, surfers, fishermen, uh, you know, very in intertwined sure. with the weather. Absolutely. It's a spark in his eye the, when the hurricane's <laughs> coming. <laughs> we do, the low pressure is off the coast. Like and yeah, you're going to have some big uh, yeah. waves coming up <laughs> this week. I don't know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if week. I feel like I'm, I'm getting over the hill a little bit when it comes to that. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. The wind, the, the pressure systems, the tides, that's what I grew to love here in the area. And Cindy and I, we actually took a year and moved back to Pennsylvania. Uh, I worked for the, an Allen, the Allentown paper, the morning call for a year. And boy, we thought we were coming back home, but 
that didn't feel like home, this was home. And what I missed the most living there was the not knowing east and west and the wind direction and how it might have applied to the weather or the waves. Yep. So uh, as soon as we could, we, we, we took a, a ticket right back to South Jersey. We've been here now for, what, 15 years? Since. We've been back for 15 years. We've been here total since 91 or 92. And we, we raised three children in Ag Harbor Township. And, and one of our, our oldest son has had autism and um, we founded an organization called Heart of Surfing, which takes kids with autism and special needs out surfing on wow. Saturdays. That's great. Yeah, so we founded that in 2014 and that's been a huge part of our lives as well as Shore Local. Uh, yeah, just kind of going back to where I started me um, career-wise, started at the Press of Atlantic yeah. City, worked there for um, about 15, 15 years, 20 years, then moved over to the current newspapers, uh, and uh, the Press and the Current were bought by uh, Warren Buffett's company, DH Media, became kind of more corporate, not, not for me, uh, and uh, we kind of, we felt an opportunity for uh, a community newspaper, one more of a magazine type of, with, with that kind of style to bring the area together, much like TV40 did, much like some of the talk radio stations around here do, uh, all in one, you know, one magazine. And uh, five years ago, almost five years ago, you know, we launched the paper and it's doing well. Yeah. It's embraced by the community, uh, embraced by the advertisers, and we really enjoy it. Great. Now, how often are you writing about coastal flooding or, you know, coastal flooding events that take you in? Storms, yeah. weather. Yeah. 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 We, we, we had uh, Nick, Nor'easter Nick, writing for us for a, a bit, uh, and that was well received, um, doing weather. We did some hurricane forecasting columns mm -hmm. and features. Yeah, what to Yeah, what to prepare for. Yeah, yeah we do We do have an annual show we do on like a hurricane preparation with like, you know, get kids together and we haven't yeah. done it yet this year. I'm, I'm guessing it's coming up shortly. Yeah, it should be. Uh, because after hurricane season is nor'easter season, which we're going to talk about too, because you guys first experience on the shore living here was with a couple of bad nor'easters. Absolutely. But our, first, our first month down here uh, together. Yeah. We were in Margate, uh, it was uh, around Amherst and Monmouth, I think, one of the lowest parts of the island around the bars there. And uh, gosh, we got hit by the Halloween storm first, the perfect storm. The perfect storm, that was 91. Okay, yeah, and then just a, a few yeah. months later in December, uh, Nor'easter. Yes. That, that, that was a Nor'easter. It was a December 91 Nor'easter and a December 92 Nor'easter. And both 92. were really, really bad. That was January 4th. Well, this is probably about oh. January as well, but the January December right. 92 storm did set records. Yeah, so, we so lost that, two cars yeah, that yeah. were rowboats going down the street. I never heard the word noise in my life. Like, I, I was <laughs> like, what is this noise? It was like, three storms yeah. in 14 months. Well, do you think yeah. people are more aware of storms now than they were then? Well, That's true. because of the development of the smart of the iPhone, I think people are more tuned in. They get alerts all the time. And so the communication is much more accessible than it was back in the 90s. But um, still, yeah, that was quite an experience to see the water level yeah. rise and rise and rise. And you're just hoping and waiting for it to get better. But, yeah. but it doesn't. How much of yeah. it? Were you there witnessing it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, how it was too late to yeah. take it out yeah. in the yeah. street. It was probably four uh, feet. Yeah, it was no to, the, to the steering wheel. Right. Yeah. It covered the edge. What kind of cars, if you don't mind me? <laughs> well, they were they were cars we had from college. Oh, so okay. they were yeah. too, right. yeah. too yeah. fancy. But these storms didn't scare you away, so that's yeah, a good thing. Yeah, they just kept it here. I mean, yeah. it, it made it a little bit more exciting, and we knew to take precautions. Uh, before every storm, we would know to put the cars up on higher ground. And, and it's great. You said, I mean, the communication is getting better on storms. You know, you, yeah, you guys mentioned, you know, definitely. you get alerts on your phone. Yeah. And, and I will say, I, I tease this every once in a while. And, and this is, in, in, you know, it'd be great if you could have an app to tell you exactly if your street's going to flood. Not, not yeah. Margate's going to mm -hmm. flood, but Amherst Ave is going right. to flood. Or, mm -hmm. and, and that could be coming. 
one day. That's just a little tease with, uh, okay. with, the, with the New Jersey Coastal Coalition is working on something to do with that. And, nice. uh, and um, we've actually put up a, a webcam in Seattle City. You know how like a lot of the beach can yeah. you log yeah. on and it shows you the beautiful shore. Hey, come on down, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't point our webcams at the beach. We right. point our webcams in intersections that flood that way people can see yeah. and log on and say, oh wow, Seattle's yeah. really, really flooded right now. And we're hopefully adding more of those up and down the shore as well. You know, we want to get the word out. That's that's part of the goal of the New Jersey Coastal Coalition. And that's part of what you guys do at Shore Local each and every day happy is spreading share. information. Yeah. And, and I neglected to say the most exciting thing we've had happen in our last issue is the inclusion of, of, of your article, Dan. So oh, yeah. and welcome, yeah, welcome to really uh, Shore Local. Well, thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We've got a great team. Yes. And you're yeah. I love writing about weather and issues, and um, and, and I, I'm excited. I love talking. It's you can ask our director Tom Quirk. It's tough to shut me up about the weather, uh, and you'll see that when my columns go on and on and on. It's pretty long, but uh, but no, it's great. It's great to be in a partnership with you guys, and, and I look forward to it and spreading good news on the uh, coastal coalition and and hopefully good weather here in South Jersey because we've had our fair share of bad weather over yeah. the past decade or so. I think so. Well, speaking of, what were your experiences with Superstorm Sandy, which, you know, was why this show was created, really, so. We were in Ann Carver Township in a, a pretty high location, so uh, it didn't impact us personally, but we know many of our friends, were, their houses were destroyed. They lost everything, and they were displaced for months and months and months, and it was extreme hardship and it um it was scary it was really really a scary time yeah, yeah, we, we always say that uh and i've used this example before because on the mainland in 2012 we had the duration that was june 2012 was, yeah. and mm -hmm. then five months yeah. later we had hurricane sandy yeah. and the mainland got the duration and the shore got sandy and our worst case scenario from a hurricane is combining the wind from the derecho uh -huh. with the flooding from Sandy across all of South Jersey. Yes. So, I mean, that's our worst case. So, yeah. you know, we got half a worst case in the mainland in June. We got half a worst case scenario on the shore in October. You combine the two, and that's kind of like what we're afraid of as meteorologists and what we hope to prepare people for. Yeah. Um, you know, because at Harbor Township, you know, I mean, you guys are probably. Uh, farther inland and high, but I mean, EHT, you know, in, in a worst case scenario, I lived in Skullville for years, yeah. and, and that could flood right, right up yeah, Robert Pass. Right. I mean, yeah. you get a bad yeah. storm surge, yeah. Rebel yeah. Firehouse flood. Yeah, yeah. The, they yeah. lost fire trucks, and yeah, it was huge. And the Duratio, we had one of those very large trampolines in the backyard for the kids. The wind picked it up and threw it in a tree and just like mangled the steel. Yeah, right, because it happened in the night, right? It did, like middle of the night, night and, yeah. and as a meteorologist, I always use that as an example. Sandy was one of our best forecasts ever. Eight days away, we told you Sandy was coming. Eight minutes before the derecho, we didn't know it was going to be that bad. So it was one of our best forecasts ever and one of our worst forecasts ever. But no one was forecasting 100 mile an hour winds. The winds were faster in the derecho than they were during Sandy. Sandy was about the water which most hurricanes are gonna be about, the mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And the duration and thunderstorms are about the wind more so than the water, so. You know, Dan, why does something like the duration sneak up on us like that? I mean, you said eight minutes. Right, it's, it's like thunderstorms pop up. They can explode really quickly. They can diminish really quickly. You know, you see really strong thunderstorms up in Pennsylvania. They're really strong in Philly. They hit the shore where it's cooler and they fall apart. But that night, instead of falling apart, intensified and uh, it's it just 100 110 mile an hour winds that night so, so no tidal flooding from derechos uh, but tons and tons of wind tens of thousands of trees no power for eight days uh, Sandy was all again it was all about the storm surge and it was about the uh, and it was all about the water yeah I remember the power was out I think in our house three or four days and it was hot. And it was a hundred <laughs> degrees. Oh, no air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in order to get relief, we would go, or, or just electricity and shop, we would, I went to Ocean City. And to encounter a, 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 a store with air conditioning where I could buy frozen food, that w it felt remarkable. Yeah, we, uh, we lived at, in Ocean City at the time, and we took in our whole family from EHT, my wife's whole family, because oh. we had power and they didn't. 
And, and conversely, when Sandy shut down the island with the flooding and the islands were closed, we were refugees to EHT and lived there for four or five days. So, it's, so it, was a, it was a wild year in 2012. Now, we haven't seen anything as wild since, but we are seeing, you know, just this week, we're seeing a lot more tidal flooding. Now, thankfully, it's been minor. It hasn't been major, but it's happening a lot more often, and that's a common theme of the show as well. Now, have you two had to write articles about, you know, the aftermath of major coastal events? To some extent, I think, or we, we typically like to showcase and highlight good news in the community and how everyone helps each other. So we've done stories in that regard to a, a hometown hero, let's say, that helped their, their neighbor. Uh, and there's, there were so many from all the storms. Yeah, I think we did see a lot of that, luckily. You know. and, and people like the good news more than the bad news, yeah. right? I mean, that's always a complaint I got in, in media, my media career. That, you know, we don't watch the news because it's murders and fires and deaths. And, you know, we want yeah. the good news. Yeah. And obviously, there's a lot of good news going around. And you're absolutely right. Disasters bring out the best in people mm -hmm. in South Jersey. We saw that during, um, you know, we saw that during Sandy. We saw yeah. that during the Duray Show. Uh, we saw that during Jonas, that nor'easter in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, you know, disasters bring out the best in people. Sure, even the snowstorms. Yeah. Where you're yeah. You know, shoveling yeah. out of your neighbor's car. So, there, yeah, there's so much good out there, and uh, it, we're, we're lucky to, to be able to report on it. Mm -hmm. And it seems that readers enjoy it. Yeah. Now, how do, um, uh, how do people read your publication? Where can people get your publication? How often? Like, give me that kind okay. of, what, when, where, why? Sure, sure. Okay. okay. Well, well, Shore Local comes out in print every two weeks now in the off season. Every do, week in the summer. It do come out weekly in the summer, okay? And we serve uh, Ocean City a bit, as well as Down Beach and mainland <coughs> Atlantic County. So we, we, in that area, we can be picked up in Wawa's, Acme, um, some shop rights, liquor stores, liquor stores wherever, yeah, wherever you can yeah. typically find free yeah. publications. Okay. But Shore Local is also online. Our website is shorelocalnews.com, and we have an active social media presence as well, thanks to my wife. <laughs> and that's on which social media platforms? Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Okay. And we post uh, articles about daily. Yeah. Pretty much daily. Yeah. Some of which doesn't make print, some of which is breaking news, and a lot of feel good stories. We have a great team of columnists. We're really fortunate in that regard. And they're all living here in South Jersey. They're kind of walking the walk while they're talking the talk. And um, so we've been we've been really fortunate. So check us out. We're on Shore Local on Facebook, Shore underscore local on Instagram, and Shore Local on Twitter. Is this, isn't social media just like a full-time job by itself? It is. I, I, really I know is. I yeah. like on that. And, yeah. I, and we find that. Yeah. Sure. Definitely. Anytime we're driving somewhere, yeah. I'm, I'm the pilot and <laughs> well, driving in the seat and Cindy's yeah. working uh, from, from the passenger seat. Yeah. What do you think the pros and cons are regarding how much of a social media presence there is now with news and weather? I think we created more work for ourselves. <laughs> like, because now we're putting out a publication, but we also need to have a strong presence on social media. We have to be online, we have to be digital. Um, we're on air, we make a strong effort to be multimedia because I think to be successful and reach everybody, you really need to. You have you know, one generation that you know, requires or demands print. It's what they want, it's what they know, what they like, and another generation that like, I couldn't pay them to put a, a physical newspaper in their hand. Right. You know, so it's, to meet all the needs of everybody, I think that you really need to be multimedia. I, I mean, I've seen that, I've been a meteorologist since 1998, so 22 years now, and when I started, I did the six o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news, and that was it. And yeah. now you do the four, four thirty-five, right. five thirty-six, <laughs> ten, ten thirty, mm -hmm. eleven. You do Facebook, you do Twitter, you do Instagram, you do radio, you mm -hmm. write your column. Right. You, you have to reach so many and it's a great thing. Yeah. You're reaching more people. But yeah. instead of one platform to reach those people, now there's yeah, you've got to go to the people. Mm -hmm. yes. When they want to read it, when they want to see it, right. how they want to mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. And so it does make it a little more difficult. That's right. Because and, we live in a world where it's everything's on their on their phone. So yeah, it's on demand. And that's, I think, a lot of why Shore Local works. 
because it, no, it's not delivered to every house. It's not even delivered, you know, at all. It's it's it depends on people wanting it and picking it up and going yeah. to the store. Yep. So it's it's a targeted type of reach that way. Well, you speaking want... of social media, if yeah, you're watching great. live right now on Facebook or anytime if you're watching us live on Title Flooding Talk, you could add your comments or questions and we try to get to them during the show. We do have a few comments, no questions. Uh, Kristen Kreisler oh, okay. says hi, Dan and Palma and guests. Uh, Marie says hi, Dan, Palma and company. Liz Toller has a wave emoji. Mm -hmm. William McCord says hi, everyone. He was on our show. Hi, Bill McCord is Summers Point um, OEF, and he was on our show. And hi, Bill. Nice to have you. Uh, and, we do like to bring a wide variety of guests. If you guys ever have a suggestion as far as, hey, I'd like to appear. I know someone who would be a good guest. Wants to talk weather, flooding, uh, you know, storm preparation, and uh, resiliency along the shore. Uh, please feel free to, uh, you know, to suggest that person, or we talk to them. One last comment from Mary Dean Adams. Another waving hand. All right. Uh, <laughs> we'll wave, wave back. <laughs> Uh, I do want to update folks, um, again, we've had tidal flooding along the shore over the past few days, and that's just because of the new moon and an onshore wind. No storms. I mean, there's been, the nearest hurricane is like a thousand miles away, which is a great thing. Uh, we ran out of names this year, so I wrote that in my most recent yeah. column. We're actually on to the Greek letters. I don't know... How many of the how much of the Greek alphabet you guys know? Uh, we pledged. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. We were in college, so I never made it. Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always uh, joked. Uh, 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 alpha beta, I know because we're richer than nerds. Uh, <laughs> and then Delta, 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 I know from SNL, uh, Saturday okay. Night Live. But uh, we're on beta already, which is a storm that's, that's giving true. Texas a foot of rain. Right. Uh, okay. We are. Um, so we ran on our names. Teddy is off of Eastern Bermuda, and it's going to be a very powerful storm. Big waves for surfers. All right. All right. Uh, hint, hint. Mm -hmm. okay. Test the waves. Big waves coming up this week, and high rip current statements and high surf advisories. So, uh, so, so we are going to have waves along the East Coast, but that storm's going to go out into Canada. So there's no East Coast threats right now, which is a good thing. And uh, but Sandy taught us very rudely that. Um, Hurricane season goes till November 30th for a reason. Sandy hit on October 29th, so you know we do have to keep our guard up right through Absolutely. November 30th. And you guys know too, as soon as hurricane season ends, we worry about nor'easters, which can be just as bad sure. as you guys learned in March in 91, 92. That year we, we had an early snowstorm shortly after Sandy. We did. Uh, it, it actually snowed like five inches to add insult to injury in Atlantic County, like in Galloway okay. and okay. Uh, Brigantine, Atlantic City. Like, keep May County didn't get it, but Atlantic County got like five inches of snow when everyone's like trying to clean up from the flooding. And it, yeah. just, it was just a horrible year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ocean County got like 18 inches. They, they got the worst of Sandy, yeah. and then they got the worst of the snowstorm. So, I mean, that's, uh, I guess it could have been worse in Atlantic so before we end the show, if you could just remind our viewers again how they could get your paper or follow you on social media. Sure. Um, you can pick up Shore Local News Magazine at any Wawa, a lot of food stores, liquor stores, restaurants, anywhere that you free papers are located. Um, and you could check us out online at shorelocalnews.com. Follow us on Facebook, Shore Local News Magazine. Instagram is Shore underscore local, and Twitter is Shore Local News. And where do you think you post the most, or is it pretty much equal across the board? Probably Facebook and Twitter. Okay. Um, you know, we do, we are on Instagram a lot, but usually if it's like a visual, if it's a more newsy thing, or weather related, it will go out on Facebook and Twitter. It is different how the yeah. different social media platforms are generational. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm the old guy with the Facebook, you know, Twitter is yeah. slightly younger, uh -huh. Instagram slightly younger, and then what, TikTok and there's more of them beyond uh, that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 but our new copy just did come out on yeah. Thursday, mm -hmm. and you could read Dan's column in it uh, yeah. regarding the hurricane season, the most the busiest season in uh, all the, the, time. the busiest one ever was 2005 when we had Katrina uh, okay. in New Orleans. We had Wilma in Florida. We had um, Rita in Texas. Uh, we made it six letters into the Greek alphabet that year. Wow. So that, okay. We made it to Zeta. I think that's the sixth letter. Um, so this year we're already on Beta, the second Greek letter, with two and a half months to go. I think there's 26 Greek letters, okay. I believe. Okay. 
And then there is no protocol what to do if we run out of Greek letters. Uh, well, I don't think we will, all right? I mean, we're, we, we got, I, I think we'll probably have another seven or eight storms. I think we'll get up to like about iota, I think is what I was predicting. So, um, so we'll see. Um, but hurricane season through November 30th. Bait is the worry right now. That's in Texas or will be impacting Texas. Uh, and then after that, I think it's gamma and then delta. And I want to say. And we do have another Facebook uh, comment to a phone from Kevin Condors. He says, hi, Dan and Palma. Thank you for another great show. And love the shirt, Dan. All right, I'm a Patriots fan out there. Right. Yeah. Not, unless he's talking about this shirt, which he might be. But I'd like to think he's talking about the uh, the Patriots shirt. We got Seattle tonight, so I'm forecasting a loss for the Patriots. So uh, we'll see. Okay. We'll see. But Tom um, did well today. But Tom did well in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, he he, he, he kind of made up for last week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and yeah, we got to play Russell Wilson tonight, so we'll see. But uh, I'm not expecting good things, so... Uh, Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Enjoy the We've had two decades of good things as Patriots. Yeah. Yeah. So, sure. yeah. uh, we want to thank you for being a guest, and you get an Irish pub oh, t-shirt. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's yours. Nice. That's really nice. And cool. there's one for you as well. Thank okay. you. All right, and we want to thank the Irish pub, of course. Uh, we are upstairs in the hotel lobby. You can visit the Irish pub. They are open 1130 in the morning till midnight during the week. 11.30 in the morning till 2 a.m. on weekends. They do have the outdoor patio. Might be a little cool for it, but comfy uh, for the next couple of days. But then starting Tuesday, we get a little taste of summer again. So uh, that's your birthday present. Uh, good, uh, good. Uh, nice 80-degree uh, uh -huh. weather uh -huh. back after your Great. birthday. And uh -huh. I do see some warmth coming up through the end of September. So, uh, so summer's not gone yet. What we kind of do this time of year is we take a step or two down and then one step up and then two more steps down and one step up. So, so we do get some warm weather. It just becomes uh, a little harder to get some extended stretches of warm weather this time of year. It definitely makes you check the weather before you get dressed in the morning. It does, or you don't. Much. I mean, you come dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Or you're very cold at night. Yeah, it tends right. to get right. cooler, much cooler at night. Yeah. Much cooler at night, which is nice. You save on the air conditioning this time. It's a time of year. You don't need heat. You don't need AC. You save on the electric bills. Yeah. Um, want to thank you for joining us for Tidal Flooding Talk. Uh, Palma is enjoying a well-deserved uh, Sunday off next week. Um, so, so I'll be broadcasting from home. And usually when that is the case, guys, um, Kenzie tries to fill your role. Okay. So my daughter, 18 yeah, month old daughter, comes on for about two minutes. <laughs> she does and, a great uh, job. <laughs> she, 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 she holds her own. So Kenzie That's will great. be our guest next week. She'll, we'll, we'll be at home and uh, we'll, we'll check in on the tropics and just kind of give you a weather update. And then the following weekend, uh, we will be back um, live on Sunday evenings. Bob and Cindy, I want to thank you so much. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you so very much. Thank Thanks you for coming. Time. And again, uh, you can uh, read their publication. Great uh, Shore Local News Magazine. Um, and uh, we, we hope you do, and we hope to see you back here soon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Go Pats. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.